Hello everybody, Joe Bagnones here, and welcome back for another episode of Umineko. Uh, it's been a day since I recorded, I didn't record yesterday. Uh, I woke up, and I wasn't feeling it. I spent all day doing Coils of Bahamut, and leveling all my old classes on FF14. Kind of a time sink, and then, you know, I, 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 you know, I wasn't in the mood. And then, uh, well, it's probably because I doubled up on work, uh, <laughs> work, quote-unquote, uh, two days ago after I recorded episode two, it's like, oh shit, I hit 100 subs. Ah, uh, fuck. Let me root around my hard drive, see what I got. Uh, settled on Air, the motion picture. Not a very good movie. Uh, it's not great. Uh, interesting piece of media with some history to it on account of it being directed by, uh, oh god, fucking Dezaki, you know, who Dezaki frames are named after, you know, like, What's an what's an easy one people will understand? Uh, at the end of like season one Pokemon episodes, it would always go like to a painterly kind of like end card kind of thing, like for the last like scene of the episode. That's a Tazaki frame named named after him. Worked on fucking shit way back in like Ashitono Joe. Uh, he worked on Astro Boy, like OG OG. But, you know, end of his career is a little, a little, a little more on shaky ground. But, hey, if, if you want to, if you want to hear more, go check out uh, my Hunter Sub special for Air, the motion picture. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and the notification bell so you can see any more videos like that that come out. Not that you want to. I'm fairly bad at anime reactions. That's, that's why I like VNs. I control the pace at which the information is delivered. And it gives me plenty of time to do stuff like this. Just ramble on and rant. Uh and move my microphone because it's... Oh, what the fuck was that? Jesus Christ. Hello? Uh, well, I'll just uh, have to go look for whatever that was. Oh, I know what it is. My desk is covered with a bunch of, like, little garbage that I fiddle with when I record. You can hear it a lot. Well, at least I hope you can't hear it a lot. Uh, I'll, I'll, like, tap stuff. It's easy to hear because, uh, I got my mic on, like, a, a boom arm. So any vibrations on my desk pick up and, like, travel to my mic. Uh, my favorite thing to tap is, uh, I have a, like, electrical pin, like, D-pinner thing. It's just a, just a little plastic doodad. But it's, uh, I can, like, spin it between my fingers. I can hit one side, then flip it around and hit the other side. I'm, uh... Let, let's just start, okay? Alright, anyway. Now, now I gotta remove my mic, because I think it fell down. I don't know what it was. It was a, uh... It was an indicator I pilfered from one of our airplanes. Uh, it was a... Oh god, I think it was my horizontal stabilizer trim indicator uh if you don't know a lot of like airplane parts uh they can't fix them when they go bad it's like it's cheaper just to buy a new one so it goes in the garbage that's called xb3 it's like the supply code for saying it's not going to get fixed and it doesn't matter it doesn't need to get turned in well technically there's a turn-in process but no one no no one cares it's it's garbage at that point. It's like you turn it in and then they throw it in the trash. So people just fucking take them home. Yep, 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 yep. Anyway, I should probably start reading now, huh? The four of us cousins were shooting the breeze over all kinds of topics. After all, there are both uh, girls and guys here. Plus, we've got people over a wide spread of ages: adult, high school, and elementary school. Each of us had. To It's going to be a rough day today, huh? I just rolled out of bed. I got my coffee. Let's try that line again. All each of us had to do was talk about ourselves, and it would be a great interest to the other three. Oh, also something I uh, realized when I was recording that, uh, that air reaction. Uh, I figured out how to separate the game track and my audio track uh, in OBS, so now I can go balance the audio levels in post. Crazy. What a concept. Well, 
こうして話をしているうちに中身はあの頃から何も変わってないことが分かったぜ。今日の音声は、バトルに同じ言葉を返してやるよ。バトラだって、六年ぶりだってのに全然変わってねえぜ。ズータイがいくらでかくなっても、中身は相変わらずお子様だってことだな。You're like five foot seven as a nine year old. Maria, m o k a s a m a Maria, that the it's mother Mokosama Janezo. Okosama, Kawaii, O Himesama, and say Josh Tekunda Garana. So Stara, Manaita Mite and Amuremo, so good, Jesh Kanami Narzo. So Stara, Mamas Tekreo, Yakuza. As much as I'm like, oh, you know, crying emoji needs correction. As, as you know, as, as much as I'm like that on Discord, my guy,、uh, let's, 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 uh, let's roll it back a bit here, huh? Yep, save us, George. Oh, no. マリア、お前、本当に素直ないいことだ。Let's change it to a shoulder rub. How about that? Because, you know, depending, depending on, you know, how well developed you've got, you might need it. お前さんはきっと幸せ者だぜ。て、いい話にすり替えつつ、約束を保持してんじゃねえぜ Let's just all try to forget about it. でも建設的な話はできてたと思ったぜ将来に対する心構えとか、yeah, 受験とか就職とかよヒヒーン悪うござーましたね俺が来たらおまぬけなドタバタばっかりでよでもマリアは今年のが楽しい<笑> yeah, all that other shit boring. そうだね僕も同感今年が一番楽しいよ Maria's sincere words probably spoke for everyone. When George and Nikisha stroked Maria's head, she giggled like a happy kitten.、Uh, kittens don't giggle, but okay. It's one hollow door you got. It's one hollow door you got. Timid knocking sound and an equally timid young woman's voice came through the door. Jessica answered brightly. Shana! マトラは覚えてるだろう。ジェシカ stood up from the bed and opened the door. There stood a servant girl who was definitely about our age. ご,ご無沙汰いたしております。マトラ様。六年ぶりでございます。シャノンです。Noting my presence and trembling a little, she bowed deeply. <sighs> <sighs> yeah, that,、uh, that work uniform really、uh, put some emphasis on.、Uh, Those syllables, if you know what I mean. Marka Marka. Sishka ni mo odoro ka sareta ga. Shannon chan ni mo odoro ka sareta ze. Anta mo skari bijin ni natta ja ne no yo. Mo. Mo tae nai o kotoba. Kyo. Sishka si yo. Kono shima ja yo. Pono shokji no eyo ka ga taka in ja ne no ga. Yeah, something in the water. Nani o kute doko o kitae ta ra. Son nani dekai o mune ni na renda ka. I mean, it's more genetics than anything, but... Oh, I guess I'll have to go and see you later. Great. I guess it's not really a first impression, but, you know... Updated impression, let's go with that. With both hands poised and saliva dribbling from my mouth, I closed in. For the sake of my honor and justice, 
I'd like to point out that I don't suffer from any strange disease that makes my lymph nodes itch until I scratch a neck open, and which can only be prevented by rubbing best breasts. All right. That's just my Battler-style way of communicating. When a boy closes in on a girl like this, nine times out of ten they get slapped or clobbered, right? But you're using the fact that there's a servant-employer relationship here in order to uh, use that power dynamic to your advantage. This is a Battler Sama original communication technique, aiming for a gag like, uh, aiming for a gag like that to break the ice. Well, that means I really do get to touch them on that one in ten chance, though, right? No. <laughs> Never ask for that much, though. By now, my hands were less than a centimeter away from Shannon's chest, but the Counter Strike has yet to come. She understood what was going on, and she was blushing and had her head lowered in embarrassment. But she was just standing there, with uh, both hands politely joined in front of her, not even trying to resist or cover her breasts. Ooh, I wasn't planning on this! B -b -b Please hit me right now! This way I'm seriously gonna touch them! Thanks, Jessica. Which is why I was glad that Jessica close, uh, chose that time to drive her elbow into the back of my head. <laughs> A man's gotta follow through with the gag. Even if he didn't want to. つか。さすがにあの前まで来たら犯罪確定だろ。ダメだぜ。抵抗しなきゃよ。で。ですけど、バトラ様は大切なお客様ですし。うーん、doesn't make it okay. あのな。お客様でも犯罪は犯罪。女の子の胸はだいたい これはもう領空審判だぜ。スクランブルハシンで即ビンタを食らわせてやれ。そんなことできません。ああ、ミミ、could。私たちは、その、家具ですし。Of uh, course, she didn't want her breasts to be touched, but if guests so desired, she intended to sacrifice her own needs in an effort to accommodate them. A girl like this needs some urgent protection. い、今時。こんな献身美徳な子がいるとは軽い目まいすら覚えるぜ。でもだめだ。俺がいやらしい顔で迫る。ハトウ。Let's do a yeah, you gotta follow the TV trope. Oh man, my furniture seems to try to like fucking break my toes and like my elbow all the time, so. それが務めですから。じゃあ、命令させてもらうことにするよ。次からバトラ君が胸に触ろうとしてきたら。George is higher up in the pecking order, so, uh, you know, I gotta listen to what he says. いいね。はい。お説かりました。以後、そのようにさせていただきます。バトラ様、ご承知を聞きくださいませ。So Shannon Chan declared while bowing elegant, elegantly to me. Her facial, oh, facial expression was radiant. I gave her a thumbs up to signal. You got it. So you've been like, what? What are like the labor laws like in Japan in the 80s that you're allowed to work here for, you know, six years? And you're like probably also like only 20 right now? Like, I'm just going to ballpark like everyone that I don't recognize as being like, oh, you're 20, you're 20. Good age, age range. すっかり一人前の使用人さんだな。今年で何年になるんだ？はい。
おかげさまで10年ほどお使いさせていただいております。What's your paycheck like? She's Shannon. Somehow those kanji spell out Shannon.、Uh, the kanji for her name are read as Shannon. Okay, I can see. I can see Kanji being able to, you know, brute force Shannon with some other pronunciations. It's another far from typical name for a Japanese person. Being a kid back in those days, I had taken in her name without paying it much attention. But for her to be called something like that is、uh, pretty unusual given that she isn't a member of the Ushuramiya family. Oh, yeah, that is weird. Maybe it's like a servant's professional name or something. Yeah, like when you get routed to a call center in India and, you know, Andy picks up the phone. If so, I can kind of understand why that Canon Kun's name sounds the way it does too. She's a long term servant who served her since she was six! Whew! Yeah, that's definitely violating some labor law. I don't know what, but. Since her body has changed radically, she didn't match my memories, but we used to know each other six years ago. It looked like she was just as shy as she had been in the past, but I got the sense that she had become imbued with the charm befitting a girl her age. Especially her breasts, her breasts. I was born with my father's daughter. I was born with my father's daughter. I was born with my father's daughter. You say that, but this is a visual novel, and I played Tsukihime, and I know what comes after the line of, I love you as my sister. Two lines later. God, Nasu is such a fucking hack, I love him. カノン君がご迷惑をおかけしたようで申し訳ございません別に迷惑なんか何も yeah, gym, 同じ男としてわかるさ愛想が悪いのは当たり前だぜ Oh yeah, especially getting like showed up in front of everybody on like something like physical strength That's a fucking blow to the gut マリアもよく言われる I would fucking go sulk too <laughs> yeah, less unsociable and more like just, just your social skills need a little work. Oh, it's <laughs> so お食事のご用意が整いましたので、皆様をお屋敷へご案内いたします。シェネン bowed again formally and returned to her duty mode. Realized that we made her stick around for any more,、uh, we realized that if we made her stick around for any more light conversation, would actually make it harder for her to do her job, so we got up off our butts to avoid interfering with her work any further. じゃあ、お屋敷に行こうか。みんなも。お腹が空いてたところでしょだな。ゴーダさんがいる時の飯は楽しみなんだよ。あの人、どこぞの有名ホテルでシェフをやってたらしくて、かなり料理の腕があるんだぜ。ほうほうそーれ楽しみ行こうぜ、マリアガツガツ、犬みたいに食い散らかすぞふー犬みたいに食い散らかすダメダメ。バトラ君の言うことはいちいち真に受けちゃダメだよ。全部冗談なんだから。さ、行こう行こう。Met once again by the magnificent rose garden, we continued onward as it came to view the imposing mansion of the Ushuramiya fa main family. t h a t apparently been built shortly after the war, so you could feel the dignity of almost half a century hanging about it. On the surface, the building was gorgeous, but being as old as it was, it was seemingly lacking in modern amenities like air conditioning. Ah,、uh, yes, the ancient 
architecture of the 1950s. According to Jessica, midwinter was especially tough, but with all the drafts. Well, it's not like they could just take the kotatsu out. I have a kotatsu upstairs. Really, really nice in the winter. Like, really good. I have it in my uh, tatami room. Though I do need to have, like, a special uh, electrical converter. Because it runs on, uh, uh, what is it? Like, half the Japanese power grid runs on, like... Oh god, what, what is it? What, what do power grids run off? Volts? Watts? Whatever. Whatever. It, it runs on 50 when the American equivalent, it, our power output is 60, so you need like a converter. Otherwise, you're gonna fucking make something catch on fire. As we entered the entrance hall, an aged servant greeted us. Uh, now, I, now him I remembered. The most senior member of the staff, Genji-san, served as the head of the servants. Matora-sama, As our eyes met, he saluted us with a composed voice. He didn't give quite as refined a bow as Goda's, but it was a bow that had feeling, even if it wasn't polished to the same degree. Genji-san, お元気そうですね。お陰様で健やかに過ごさせていただいております。マトラ様こそご立派になられました。親方様の若き日に少し似てこられましたが。Well, let's hope uh, you know, that's all that resembles him, huh? 俺がじい様に? ってことはさぞやじい様は若い頃モテたろうな。<laughs> says the man who has probably never touched a titty in his life. Shen and Chen bowed deeply and saw us off. Leaving the entrance hall, we headed to the dining hall under Genji-san's guidance. Genji-san, just like uh, Kumasawa-san, stood in stark contrast to us young people who had grown beyond recognition over the last six years. This figure was exactly the same in my memories of six years ago. Seemed like time had stopped since we last met him. Uh, Genji-san was a silent and dignified, diligent person. He was like grandfather's close aide or caregiver. In fact, he could even go so far to say he was grandfather's right-hand man. Actually, it seems that he was by grandfather's side more than my late grandmother was. According to Jessica, grandfather trusts him more than any of his blood relatives. But I wonder how long he served. I never asked him for the details. But I think I heard he's been here since the beginning, when the mansion was constructed. That is to say, he's dedicated half of his life to serving here. No wonder, grandf no wonder Grandfather trusts him. As we cut through the open... The what? Ceilinged. Open ceilinged. Ooh. Ooh. I've never seen, like, ceilinged like that. Hmm. Open ceilinged hall behind Genji-san something I had no memory of from six years ago. Yeah, a big creepy painting. There was an awfully big portrait hung right in front of the stairs that rose to the second floor. Almost like there'd be a secret door behind that in an early Resident Evil game that brings you back to, like, the starting zone. Without thinking, I stopped walking under its spell. Since I suddenly stopped, Maria, who was following behind me, ran into my back. <laughs> I pointed at the large and conspicuous portrait hanging in the hall. Everyone else stopped too. Ah, <laughs> What, did the old man go off the deep end? It's got a plaque next to it. So, uh, you mind, uh, telling us who it is? 
The portrait depicted a woman in an elegant dress who gave off a sense of refinement and who seemed to suit the western style of this mansion. I couldn't have guessed her age, but the sharpness and obvious strength of will in her eyes gave me the impression of youth. It was a different feeling than the compound mood of middle-aged women that are often in famous pictures. If this woman had normal black hair, I might have thought it was a portrait of my long-deceased grandmother in her prime. However, the woman in the portrait had beautiful golden hair and didn't look Japanese at all. Uh, I, I guess I'd call that gold. It's more of like a like light brown, slightly like reddish chestnut. Let's go with chestnut. Nah, chestnut would be too dark. I don't know. As though trying to show off her knowledge, Maria answered that simple question with authority. It's, it's Beatrice. I'm not, I'm not saying whatever the fuck George said. I think I already said this, but Rokinji was a small island that's only about 10 kilometers around. However, considering that only the Ushuramiya family lives here, it's quite large. So, only a harbor and the set around the mansion were set up to be lived in. Beyond that, the island remained as untouched as it was when it was still uninhabited. To understand just how dangerous a vast and empty forest with no lamplight phones or people passing, passing through it at all actually is, you need to shift your urban assumptions a little. You see, if by chance you fell down in a hole in the depths of the forest and sprained your ankle, or cry or scream, no one will come save you. Yeah, I went hiking in the woods, uh... I was about to say in the winter, but it wasn't the winter, it was fucking the middle of summer, it was late June. But I was up in the mountains so far, where there was still like... 10 feet of snow in the tree line because the sun just never got there. And, you know, elevations like that. Uh, and I reached a point where the trail was just gone because everything's buried in the snow. So I just had to, like, look for, like, gaps in the tree line and be like, uh, this is probably where the trail is. But as I was walking on that, uh, one of my legs just shot down through the snow because I was walking over, like, bent over, like, saplings. So there was just like a whole air cavity under the snow. I went all the way down up to like my hip. And of course I have like my backpack with like all my camping gear and like food and water. So I, that goes flying backwards and I like pop my hip. And if I didn't have my backpack to like stop me from going further, I probably would have like dislocated my leg and then would have been stuck like an eight hour hike up in the mountains. Uh, <laughs> with no cell service, alone, brutal. Super easy to just fucking, like, die. I probably would have been fine, like, <laughs> give, me, give me a day or two and I would have been able to crawl back to my car. And it was a, uh, it was a hiking trail that not many people go to because I was the first one up there that season because I had to clear a bunch of down trees from the winter off the road in order to get to the trailhead. If it then got dark, the forest, where there are no streetlights, would become enshrouded in complete darkness. Also, since there obviously aren't any guideposts here, it's easy to get lost and lose your sense of direction in the dark forest. Nowadays, most people see forest as a peaceful place, but to the people of bygone eras, before the light of civilization drove out the night, Forests were like oceans on land, geographically separating one culture from another. Just as fishermen who ha uh, go out into the ocean occasionally have their lives put in danger despite their technical knowledge, technical knowledge was also demanded of hunters who went out into the forest, and their lives were occasionally put in danger just the same. If the child were to go play in that dangerous forest, something terrible might happen. Some parent might have thought that. Uh, maybe my grandmother, or Possibly the man himself, my grandfather, might have said it. Maybe it was a story handed down on this island from long, long ago. There's a terrible witch in the forest. You must not go in. 
Thus, Rokunjima's ghost story was born. That is the legend of the Witch of Rokunjima. So when we say witch on this island, we're referring to the master of the vast and savage forest. Now, which reminds me, when I was little and stayed in this mansion, during the eerie nights where the wind and rain struck the windows, stories like the witch of the forest is roaming around in search of a sacrifice scared the heck out of me. Beatrice, huh? As I searched my memories prompted by Anarchy, I did vaguely remember being told that was her name when I was very small. Like big animals roaming the forest, you know, you're you're on an island. じいさま。孫たちが信じないもんだから、わざわざ絵に描き上がったか。じいさまの妄想の中の魔女だよ。この絵を掲げた頃から、現実と幻想の区別がつかなくなり始めた。I feel that. That's one of the downsides of being on vacation for so long, you know, you stay you stay locked in. Locked in the house so long, you start going, ooh, ooh, swifting, quickly shifting between my manic and depressed phases. Absolutely paranoid, like, is that, who's at the door? It's, oh, it's, it's, it's the postman. He's bringing me my bills. いる。だから、それを理解することができない私たちにもわかるよう、あの絵を描かせたって言うんだけど。気持ち悪いったらありゃしないぜ。お嬢様。<笑> おやかたさまにとっては大切な肖像画です。親方様の前でそのようにおっしゃられることがございませんよ。勝っ。分かってるぜ。頼まれても言わねえよ。ジェスカ turned A small portion of this island is controlled by the Ushurumiya family. If all of the wild rem uh, rem what? If all of the wild remainder? If all of the wild remainder? I would I would have said that if if all the wild that, that remained was the witch Beatrice's domain. Then one could say that she was the being who actually ruled over Rokinjima. The unsettling, ominous feeling I had felt on the boat trip when I learned that the shrine had been struck by lightning revived within me a bit. At the time, Kumasawa-san had tried to tell an ominous story about Rokinjima and had been stopped by Jessica. I didn't know what she had tried to tell us about this island, but there's one thing I did know. Rokunjima's ruler was not the Ushurumiya family. It was the witch Beatrice. Yes. Because this was the witch's island. Yeah, put those fucking long legs to good use, my guy. Uh, when I looked around, everyone was already headed towards the dining hall. I hurriedly chased after them. We walked up the huge... Up... Ooh, ooh, words. We walked up to the huge double doors that led into the dining hall. Kenji-san knocked. The door was opened and we were invited inside. The dining hall, which screamed a filthy rich, featured a super long table, which was obviously designed with no other purpose than to make guests conscious of the rank. And her parents were already seated in the, uh, seated in accordance with that ordering. Uh, the old bastard pressed us to sit. Only the places where we would where we would sit were empty at the long table, which only made us feel our tardiness all the more. The seat at the very head of the table, which you might call the seat of honor, was for the most highly ranked, the most and reserved for grandfather. It was still empty. He was probably planning to come in last and make himself look important. 
Seating order, as you face the seat of honor, went from left to right in rows of two, with the ranking being lower the further you went from it. So at the left-hand side of the row closest to the seat of honor was the second-ranked seat, belonging to the eldest of the adult siblings, Uncle Kraus. Have we, have we met Kraus? I don't think so. Looks like he hasn't arrived yet either, so the seat was empty. Then opposite him, on the right-hand side of the first row, sat the eldest daughter of the family, Auntie Eva, ranked at number three. The left-hand side of the second row was for number four. There sat the old bastard, Rudolf, as the third of the siblings. Opposite of him sat number five, the youngest sibling, Auntie Rosa. Going like this, you might think the next one would, uh, next ones to come would be their husbands and wives, but I uh, guess again, because the left-hand seat following the third row, meaning rank number six, was actually Jessica's seat. Opposite of her was George Anarchy. Hello, motorcycle. Great to hear you. Then, the seat next to Jessica was, Ma was me, and opposite of me was Maria. One next to me on the left-hand side of the fifth row, all the way down at number 10, finally came Auntie Natsuki. Damn, you're really like the black sheep of the family, huh? Opposite her was Uncle Hideyoshi. And next to uh, Aunt Natsuki, and uh, the sixth and final row on the left-hand side was Kirihi-san. Oh, oh, Kirie. Uh, the seat opposite of Kirie-san had been laid out like the others, but was empty. According to the ranking system, that spot is where the seat... That spot was the seat where Auntie Rosa's husband should be sitting. He hasn't come, as far as I know, yet the table had been laid for his seat. Mmm, suspicious. These kinds of ranking orders usually permitted the spouse of a corresponding status, but the Ushurmiya family had an original kind of ranking. Maybe it's a leftover of male chauvinism. Under the notion that the mother's womb is only a temporary house for the child and she contributes no genes, the child of direct descent would have the highest ranking, followed by the grandkids. Meaning that the spouses, with no blood ties, would be considered the last in line. That's terrible, but according to the ranking order, grandmother, if she was still alive, would be in a position even lower than mine. In youth, obey your father, after marriage, your husband, after aging, your children. Leftover of times when they used to say, women, no home in three worlds. And I'm gonna guess that's a Japanese saying. Long ago, when I was still incapable of figuring this all out, I thought it was so great that we could all chat with the adult siblings sitting in the group and us cousins and ours. However, now that I re-examined their seating order after growing up a bit, there's some very complicated feelings in me. That's Natsuki, married to the eldest son of the family. Oh, that's why. That's why she's she she's a you know not a uh, blood relative. Gotcha. Uh, responsible for managing the household, and number two for all practical intents and purposes, sat to my right, which meant she was two steps lower than me in the ranking order. It was difficult to guess what was going on through her head. That's why I made a small apologetic gesture before sitting down. <laughs> あ、ああ、はい。食ったり食べたり食事したりしてたら。いつの間にかこんな身長に。さすが男の子ね。身長はいくつくらいあるの ?180かな。つうかおばさん、そこは食べてばっかりじゃねえかって。え?ああ。
She never got into our kid's circle, and my only impression of her was uh, some as someone who uh, always talked about complicated stuff with my parents while having a crabby expression on her face. The fact is that having barely ever exchanged words, I hesitated a lot even just now and uh, about how to approach her. And it was pretty much a flop. Silverware had been tidily set on the table, but the meal itself hadn't been brought in. As a rule, the meal doesn't start until the man of the head, the man at the head of the table has taken a seat. So as long as grandfather, the highest ranked, didn't come, lunch would be indefinitely on hold. Not even the appetizers would come. In other words, the silence in the dining hall was the sound of our parents as they withstood their hunger and waited on tenterhooks for grandfather to come. Except, the grandfather I remembered always showed up at right always showed up at the right time when we ate together like this. He wouldn't ever have been so late as to have everyone else waiting on him. おせえな、じいさま。俺の記憶じゃ。いや、時間に厳格な人だったと思うんだけどな。まあ、6年前はそうだったかもな。最近はそうでもねえよ。というか、もう自分の世界オンリーって感じで、会食にも顔を出さね
源氏を呼べ苦害の魔手を用意させろ Demonic absence. Oh, I was right. Midori no yo se no sasayaki ga todo kano. Ah, Genji wa doko da. Genji wa yobe. Before the door, Kraus, Nanjo, and Genji kept waiting for the master of the house who would not come out. Hm. Skari kira wa rete shimatta yo da. Mo watashi no koi de wa nani mo todo kan yo. I mean, I would hate you too if you wore those colors around me. Ugh. Fucking blue undershirt, red blazer, yellow tie? My guy, what the fuck are you doing? Krauss shrugged as though saying, that's no use, and bitterly smiled. He himself hadn't believed for a moment that his father would answer his calls. However, as it was the duty of the eldest son, he had formally made the request. Yeah, fuck, fuck your kids, but at least go see your grandkids. ちょっと顔を見せてやったらどうだね。うるさい、黙れ。私に意見するという感情。貴様など呼んではおらぬ。私は源氏を呼べと言ったのだ。さあ、急ぎ。すぐに呼べ。時間は常に有限だ。Because these are the ravings of a madman. Kinzo slammed the old heavy book on the table over and over. The racket obviously indicated his highest displeasure. Kinzo put his spectacles down and flew up from his chair. He spread his arms open wide as if to sing to the packed opera house, as if appealing to someone, and yelled, Why? なぜにいつも私には邪魔が入るのか全てを捨てよ全てを捧げよその見返りに私は一つしかも止めないというのにああベアトリーチお前の微笑みをもう一度見られるならば私は世界中から微笑を奪い取り全てを all right, I'm getting real fucking tier one sub vibes from this guy. Oh, uh, yeah, it's all the dust in the air. Maybe you should open the window? Maybe you should open the door? Your guess is because mine got it. Yeah. Maybe it's all the fucking absinthe my guy is drinking, just slamming glasses of it all day? Like, no wonder he's gone off the deep end. Choking coughs continued to pour from the study. Yeah, I doubt Goda is the kind of guy who just throw it in the microwave to warm it up for us. Kraus spun on his heels. He looked at his wristwatch, mumbling and acting as though he had wasted time doing something he knew would be in vain. Without waiting for Nanjo, Kraus went downstairs. And she urged Nanjo to go and eat. Nanjo looked first to Kraus's back as he disappeared downstairs study door and he let and he let out a deep sigh. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, like that's gonna happen. Genji gave a small duck of his head and descended the stairs. Genji saw him off and knocked at the study door. Kinzo returned to his seat in the study and pressed an old fashioned switch on the table. I got like an electric lock on the door? After a small delay, a heavy sound at the door unlocked and could be heard. Kinzo believed that his family might try to break into his study. Perhaps someone once opened the window for some air and scattered some important documents or something. And that had made him extremely upset. Now, Kinzo had placed a secret secure lock in his room, making it so that without his permission nobody could enter, and locking himself in his dungeon he himself created. Genji, who he trusted the most, was relatively free to enter the room, but even that was not absolute. If Kinzo was in a bad mood, even he wouldn't be able to enter. Anyone else would be limited to holding a conversation through the door, not even seeing his face. And most of the time, they wouldn't even get a real conversation. Yeah, they would get whatever the fuck that was. However, that didn't propose any particular problem for the family. That was because they had no reason to go out of their way to interfere with uh, the retirement of a cant cantankerous... of the cantankerous and aged head. The fact that he was completely immersed in his odd research and always locked up in his hideaway was something of a benefit. They made the most of his refusal to leave the study, entrusting him to the hands of the servants, while they themselves kept their distance. Genji, Genji headed to the corner of the study. There, suspicious-looking bottles boasted venomous colors were on display. They were actually liquor, but considering that they were placed in this shady-looking room, you could almost suspect they might be ghastly poisons. Inside the study was filled with the mountainous library of outlandish books that Kinzo had amassed. They were bizarre old books, some banned, and each and every one of them either forbidden, cursed, or sealed. Of course, if no one were to actually call them old books, Kinzo would fly into a rage and say something like this. Call them grimoires! Uh, there were candles which had melted in a suspicious looking fashion and taken on peculiar forms and all manner of other strange objects, probably having something to do with black magic. The constellations uh, covering the celestial globe would have caused anybody who knew the night sky well to raise an eyebrow. The illustrations inscribed in old books, haphazardly left open, range from the religious mystical to the demonic and grotesque, as well as bizarre diagrams of various magic circles. And above all, the sweet poisonous smell that filled the room, which to those entering for the first time would surely be a profound assault on their sense of sight, smell, and other senses making them lose their grip on reality. Inside that study, Genji, with his well-trained hand, prepared Ginz uh, Kinzo's usual drink. If you didn't know that the ghastly dark green liquid that filled the complexly designed bottle was liquor, you certainly wouldn't want to put it in your mouth. Even if I did know that it was absinthe, uh, I still wouldn't put it in my mouth. Absinthe is rough. Is absinthe the... Which is the one that's like licorice flavor. I'm okay with licorice, but uh... You know, it's not my favorite thing. I can put up with it. I don't want to sound like an idiot. I do that enough already. Uh, so I'm going to Google which alcohol is like licorice flavored. Licorice. Alcohol. Uh, da, 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 da. Nope. I was wrong. 
Jägermeister is licorice flavored, which is why I fucking hate it. Poured a small quantity of the spirit into the glass, placed a cube of sugar into a strangely shaped spoon, and then poured water from a pitcher over it. What, you making like an old fashioned? With absinthe? Ugh. Strangely, when the colorless water was poured into it, the dark green liquid turned a cloudy white. It created a strange visual illusion that the water had caused a chemical reaction, which made it all the more difficult to perceive the concoction as liquor. To this, he added an original flavoring that Kinzo liked and fine-tuned the taste. And there was no recipe. Its success was measured only by Kinzo's mood swing when he drank it, and he had learned how to make it only after many decades. Kenji placed the glass on a tray and made his way over to Kinzo. Kinzo was now gazing out the window. <laughs> Kinzo had regained his composure, so much that he was now unrecognizable as the man who had been shouting, screaming, and yelling just moments before. In the man's... In that man's back dwelt a dignity and intelligence made plain simply by how he was tilting his glass and gazing down at the scenery beyond the window. Genji, in order to allow Kinzo to set down his glass any time, motionlessly waited behind him, to his left, as though he were a living sideboard. As he did, Kinzo stuck out just the glass, his gaze still directed at the world outside the window. There was just a mouthful remaining. It's not a gesture intended to set upon it. What? It was not a gesture intended to set it upon the tray, as Genji inspected. Expected. The words are hard, you know. But was a motion to hand the glass over to Genji. That's a nice way of saying that looks fucking gross. No thanks. Genji respectfully received the glass and inclined it uh, a little to taste its contents. Then he downed it in one gulp. <laughs> Kinzo smiled at his loyal subject who refused to put aside rank even when asked to. However, he was not making fun of him. It was relaxed, like a smile at a close friend's un unwritable bad habit. Uh, it's okay, I forget my age too. I have to think about it when someone asks me. Uh, it's okay, I forget my age too. Kinzo gave a thin smile, as if to say he didn't need compliments. <laughs> Yeah, you're off your fucking rocker. Now my family used to be uh, filthy rich. I'm talking like they owned a resort, a golf course. Uh, they owned a large, uh, like, water company. Not like city water, but like water bottle company. But, uh, you know, the Great Depression happened. Had to sell, sell the company. And then, like, the resort burnt down in, like, the 70s. And there's, like, nothing left. Whoops. Oh, well, what can you do? Eva 
どこの馬の骨とも分からん男の赤ん坊など産みおって hey, don't be mean to Hideyoshi. ジェシカは無能で無学だジョージェには男としての器がない、hey. Yeah, George seems kind of like a バトラーは後ろ宮家の栄養を自ら捨て負った愚か者だマリアなど見るのも気らわしい the eye. <laughs> wow. なぜだなぜに後ろ宮の血はこうも無能なのか私の築き上げた栄光を受け継ぐにふさわしい者はおらんのかああ分かっておるとも。これがベアトリーチェの呪いであることも分かっておる。なあ、it, it may just be that you know they got raised in a weird environment that was probably not great for their development and、uh, they came out probably not the best for it。ふん、黄金の魔女め、それが私への復讐のつもりか。憎みたくば憎むがよい。逃げたければ逃げるがよい逃がさぬ逃がさぬ逃がさぬ逃がさぬわお前は私のものだ常に私の腕の中でなくてはならん okay, Grandpa, let's get into bed. 私の生涯のすべてなのだ我が鳥かごにて永遠に私に私だけにささやき続けるのだベアトリーチェなぜに微笑み返してはくれぬ Because you're fucking crazy old man <laughs> There it is ベアトリーチェ<laughs> Okay, guy After howling, Kinzo choked once more. Genji set the tray and glass down and patted his master's back. Genji's facial expression did not change. It was always like this. <laughs> After his almost deranged out. Almost deranged? That. <laughs> take the almost out of there, guy. After his almost deranged outburst of the past few minutes settled down, Kinzo rearranged his composure once more. Regained.、Uh, the way his attitude changed was like seeing two different people a wild Kinzo and a composed Kinzo living together inside one body. Alright, what are you gonna do? Kono mini, Saigo ni tosser coin gar naraba. So they walk my touch no rule to ni takuste me tai. Maho no chikarawa, it's a rule of this. Go play demons craps instead. I won, uh, I won like $500 on the slots at a casino once. So on my way out, I passed by the roulette table. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. $500 on black. And the, and the dealer's like, You sure? And, and, and any other bets? I'm like, No. It's like, Okay. Red. Boom. All gone. I was like, Well, easy come, easy go. And one reason I prefer the craps table over like something like Blackjack or、uh, Texas Hold'em is that everyone、uh, at the craps table wants you to do good. Like, everyone, you're, you're, you're not playing against anybody except the house. Everyone else, you roll good, they get money too. So it's a, it's a team effort to beat the casino. So if you're on a hot streak, people are fucking cheering, clapping, hitting the table, buying drinks.、Oh, it's a great time. It takes a, it takes a little bit to learn, though. In Japan, there are no jujits of the people who are in the world. マリオクが宿るこんなんなリスクが生じれば生じるほどに魔力は強く生じるのだ
Okay. 神話に登場する数々の奇跡は天文学的リスクに奇跡的な低確率を得て成就した驚愕すべき魔力の結晶なのだと言える。モーゼが海を割ったのは神の奇跡ではない。蹂輪の計りに乗せられ軍勢によって航海に追い詰められた絶対絶命のリスクが奇跡の魔力を生んだのだ同じことが同じ規模で繰り返されようとも再び海が割れることはないだろうなぜならモーゼは力ある者たちのルーレットの麻生儀ナユタをかけたよりも多く存在する目の中に一つだけ刻まれた奇跡を見事引き寄せることができたからだ10 to the 56th power and 10 to the 60th power? OK I didn't know、uh, those had specific Names the Japanese? Uh, are, those, are those numbers special? Some of the people who are in the world are in the world. So, the people who are in the world are in the world. So, the people who are in the world are in the world. So, the people who are in the world are in the world. So, the people who are in the world are in the world. So, the people who are in the world are in the world. So, the people who are in the world are in the w o r l しかし、真に魔力あるものはその奇跡をつかみ取り、神秘を成就させるのだ。もしも私にその魔力があるならば、私はその奇跡をつかみ取るだろう。生涯を費やした願いを実現できるだろう。Yeah, that'd be great if it did, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't, and you're just a crazy old guy. Kinzo looked up to the sky outside the window. He spread his arms as if appealing to somebody up in the skies. どれほどの月日を経ようともお前の面影が消えることはない。ただお前の美少が見たいそれだけだ I mean, you'll, you'll probably see it, but it'll be more like a condescending laugh at you. お前から授かったものをすべて返そうあの日からの栄光をすべてお前に返そう富も名誉も黄金もいらぬお前に授かったすべてを返そう私はただお前の美少が見たいだけなのだご賞だ right, right, ベアトリーチェーンああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああ And she had no choice but to wordlessly watch over his master's lament. Yeah, what would he do? I don't know. Yeah, Sokum. Toshi Sama wo guai ga sugre rare nai to no koto da. Sekkak ko ste ich nen buri no kai mo ni atsmatte kure ta Sokum to chu shoku o tomo ni deki nai koto. Yeah. Hijou ni zan nen ni ste o rare ta. Go da. Lunch o h a j m e t kuru. Oh, yeah, the great shame. The great shame. So, there are hundreds of two shots being able to fucking chop you on the firewood, like he said. Nanjo Sense, so many of those are my own. I have a ruin. Say, me to Kaokura, I miss it. I could have more. You probably wouldn't have wanted to see him. Taicho to you, you are. Kigin this now. Korebakariva, Skeru Kusriga, Arimas and Node. I mean, oh, yo, yo, give him some tranquilizers. So, yeah, nice. Give him a couple of Zans,、uh, maybe a couple of lean. So, yeah, yeah. I'd probably bring him down a couple of notches. You got the Janica, Ludolf. 
ご機嫌は伺えたんだそれとも不機嫌な親父殿を私に代わりお前が説得して連れてきてくれるのかねああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、声をかけない方が機嫌の治りは早いと思うがね。いや、let him, let him burn himself out。ゲンジさんだけだよ。じい様の機嫌を治せるのは。情けないぜ。自分の親の機嫌を使用人に直させるんだからよ。ジェシカ、余計なことは言わなくていい。She planned for a complaint to be heard only by her cousins, but it had reached even Krauss's ears. Scolded, Jessica scowled and turned away, sulking. Kigen ga unnu ってことは病状はそんな悪くないんじゃねえの元気がないってんならともかく機嫌が悪いってのは少なくとも気はしっかりしてる証拠だぜおじい様は特に強い気力をお持ちだからねでも体が必ずしもそれに伴えるとは限らないよ去年からずっと余命3ヶ月って言われ続けてる。Since last year. 最初の診断が正しいなら、おじいさまは気力だけで流られてるってことになる。気遣ってあげないといけないよ。Lunch started with the family head seat still empty. The man who should have been sitting there was already old. And the brilliant glory which had rebuilt the Usher Mia family in a single lifetime was slowly being forgotten. Nobody seemed to feel uncomfortable with the meal,、uh, when the meal began with that seat still empty. <laughs> well, because I'm a lazy piece of shit. That seems like a good place to stop, mainly because, you know, that's, that's the chapter transition. And、uh, I don't want to stop in the middle of a chapter, you know? Keep it,、uh, keep it, all, keep it all even, you know? Let, let, the, let the flow of the story guide us,、uh, you know? Clearly,、uh, the author knows good stopping points better than I do. So,、uh, yeah, with that,、uh, that's all. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and notification bell. See you all next time for the next episode of Human Echo. See you guys all there later. I'm gonna go have breakfast. I haven't eaten yet. Maybe that's why I sound so dumb. I have no fucking nutrients in my brain. Later. <laughs>